Hello, everyone. Joy to the world. It's two on and sun. Actually, it's just it's the beginning of December, but we're getting ready for the Christmas season. You know what the Christmas season means for me, Father? A show at the... Yeah, a show. A show. show at the the Holiday Hooligans, house. my <laughs> band, is going to be playing the Turbo House. That's in St. Henry on North Dam Street. And 511, it, 5011. 5011. And uh, what we do is we play for charity every year. And uh, we're doing it this year for the holiday gift campaign. What they do is uh, kids in foster homes and, you know, need some cheering up. They write letters to Santa. Well, they're Santa. They go out and they buy these co- They buy the costumes. What am I saying? Wrong holiday. <laughs> they, they buy the presents for them and stuff they like that. They give all the children so, little chocolate bars. And- it is a $10 <laughs> donation for a five-star band. Me, just included in my band, is wonderful. And, uh, you know, it's like a great band with a crappy singer. What's a great band with a crappy singer in history, Father? Most. <laughs> and, anyhow, um, yeah, so uh, if you want to come down and want to support me, moi, the son of Tuan and Son, you could do that. And if not, you could leave a donation at Gamma, and we'll just put it in there and pretend it was part of the show. In fact, if you can come, give Guillaume the money, who works at the desk, and just start banging your head for five painful minutes just awkward with no music at all then you could both have that story to remember so remember that time i, I had banged my head to uh air supply in <laughs> in midair at gamma at gamma then you got it all right now moving on to the show hey father hello son hey did we do our intro for this one no, not yet. Okay, well, well I, I... We may have. I, welcome to Two Honest John. I'm Ryan Stuckjona. Uh, I'm Philip Stuckjona. And we're talking like wrestlers in the 80s right now because we are going to be talking about Team Sled Dog. <laughs> <laughs> we're yep. going to be talking about Team Sled Dog. Darn it. <laughs> yeah. Well, what is it? I guess um, I'll let you know. Team Sled Dog is... Uh, a, uh, it's my version of the Piquiti Tercia system. When I say my version, I've had a lot more training than a lot of people have in it. I've been doing it for about 35 years now. And uh, I concentrate as much on the old system as the new system. So I have a bit of a synthesis. And uh, we've had some students uh, that have been around for about 30 of those years. And uh, right now what we're doing is we're setting up small training groups. We've already set one up in Ottawa. We're uh, actually having our seventh training sequence uh, in um, about, a, well, about a week. On the December 13th, we're, we're going to be in Ottawa at uh, the Blue Water Martial Arts Academy in Rockland. And we're going to be doing our, our basically our Christmas training. And then in the new year, we're going to be setting up some uh, so uh, some classes in Toronto area, and hopefully we'll be able to go further afield. We're looking at maybe even Quebec City at some point in the future, but uh, nothing has come to light as of yet. But the idea is that we're going to be bringing people up because we we want to have people learn the martial arts, not just like this slap trap stuff that a lot of people are um, learning simply because they don't have access to uh, the system. And so. We hope to be able to do it. We don't. We don't try to put ourselves on any pedestal, but we definitely think that, uh, you know, the fact that uh, we are associated with the Dog Brothers from the very beginning, that uh, we we make sure that what we know is what will work. And so, as a result, you know, the old seen it fought, seen it taught thing. Well, that actually shows up as much on uh, the Bikini Tercia site as anything else. So what you're saying is you're a humble yet knowledgeable powerhouse. <laughs> yeah, I'm really, who's really going humble. national? <laughs> we're going to Ottawa. We're going to Toronto. We might go to Quebec City. We're coming to a town near you. And if you want to learn from one of these stores, someone who respects the history but knows how to trim the crap, then come to Two Hard <laughs> Philip Jonah, Team Sled Dog. Oh my God. Bro. Yeah. Professional wrestling in Piquita yeah. Garcia. Who knew there was a connection? Oh, yeah. It's kind of like all this wonderful information you just said put through <laughs> the BS blender. You know? I'm pretty much like what happens when you like you know type something in Google. I, I, I pop up. <laughs> I am a blog. Of Ryan I am a blog. <laughs> Any, anyhow, um, all right, Dad. So that's Team Sled Dog. We're talking like that. Um, you know, uh, you're talking about winter Christmas training. Um, you know, you've had some Christmas training. Christmas, uh, Christmas training. I've had some Christmas training. Yeah, we've yeah. had some. You know what? Well, when I was first starting, I thought that one of the things you had to do was kind of walk outside in your bare feet in the snow. So I did that. And uh, were you being punked? I wasn't being punked. No, uh, I mean I was doing it. I mean it was just one of those things where you you see these guys in pictures of you know in like most of the times in the sixties and seventies when I was starting, 
the you know the thing you'd see would be pictures from Japan or the Orient, and mostly Japan because Japanese were people were the ones who would take most of these kinds of pictures. And so it show some guy in a uniform, a kimono, sitting under some waterfall with really really cold water splashing on him, or or doing kicks on you know in the snow and stuff like that. And you know there's even special training, uh, geiken gaku or something like that. And I I don't speak Japanese, so I won't even begin to know. But the idea is that they they do all this stuff and it's, they have special words for tra- training in the winter time so go outside and really push your brain to the, its limits and uh, it's really kind of amazing so I of course as a little kid felt that uh, the only way to really do this stuff properly was to uh, mimic them so yeah because we all know the Orient is the equivalent of a Canadian vicious winter weather <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah I guess there was that there wasn't that part that anyway so we um, I really had admired Elvis's Hawaii movies so in the winter I would go out in a hula shirt and sing to strangers <laughs> <laughs> actually it's funny uh, about a week or two ago a guy that I know a guy by the name of uh, Eugene Cedeno who happens to be a grandmaster in the catch gamble system he posted some stuff about Elvis Presley and all of these guys that he used to train with and these guys were pretty real they were all training under this guy Ed Parker who was Elvis Presley's de facto uh Kempo instructor. He's a guy that has the, the had that crest on the front of Elvis Presley's guitar, and Elvis would have his dress shirt underneath his kimono, and he would be doing stuff. Man, was he horrible! Yeah, but he was the king. Dad. <laughs> I know. No, I, I know. But I mean, but it was just funny because you'd look and go, "Wow!" I mean, he would, of course, you know, imagine. I suppose he imagined he was pretty good, but you know, and his his teacher Ed Parker promoted him to an eighth degree, but. I mean, I remember there were certain people who, there was actually a guy named Bill Wallace who wrote an article in a mag, in a uh, karate magazine and he, he was talking about when he was living in Memphis, he was, I guess, brought down to meet uh, Ed, Ed Elvis Presley and all these things. And you know, Elvis Presley gave him a certificate signed by Elvis Presley. And doing you, you just wanted an autograph. <laughs> well, yeah, but the thing is, but he, he kind of destroyed it because he didn't want anybody to think that he was actually a black belt under Elvis Presley. Oh, okay. All they do, I mean, like this guy Bill Wallace was a world champion kickboxer. He was a, a karate champion for many years before that. I mean, the guy was a for real person. Um, he's actually one of the guys who taught uh, John Belushi martial arts. He he was one. He was a guy. I think he may have even been the guy who discovered his cold dead body speaking of corpses uh, anyway so he speaking of Christmas <laughs> speaking of Christmas, Christmas nothing says Christmas. Christmas like a dead famous corpse <laughs> <laughs> anyway um, but this guy Bill Wallace did, you know, but uh, you know, this picture or this videotape of these guys you know guys that you read about and they're all kind of letting Elvis Presley beat the you know not living daylights out of them but pretend to beat the living daylights out of them and, they, and they're you know they kid kind of look sideways at them and they kind of fall over it was kind of like those uh, really bad um, movies that not movies, but those videos of those uh, chi masters you see from the Orient. Yeah, uh, and you kind of cringe. Go, that's not really working. I hope everybody knows that. <laughs> <laughs> it's fun to believe, Father. <laughs> yeah. it's a it's a collective subconscious of believing. It's like this guy is one of the X Men. <laughs> <laughs> he used to be a man. Yeah, now he's an X Men. <laughs> All righty. So um, anyway, beyond uh, some barefoot stuff what about what else about winter training like if someone was to uh basically right now everyone out there if you want to try a martial art you know you can come to our you can come to our gym here i am talking for dad like i don't know how to fight at all but dad does and um you could try one of these trial classes for free and see if you want to work off your winter weight with it because we all know around christmas time everyone eats like crazy and stuff and then uh, spends new year's holding their stomachs and saying never again (laughs) never again so um in the winter what could what's the type of martial arts that you always preferred to train you know knowing it's cold outside well, I guess things things like jujitsu is very good because uh, you get to wear a very thick kimono and you know roll around the floor and you, you have a, you know you have, there's a, a lot of intense body training so that your body gets warmed up and stays warm for the duration of the class and Muay Thai is very good because it's a very high aerobic content uh, you really can burn off a lot of calories in an hour and a half I mean there's a, there's all the arts are very in training intensive. I mean, very rarely are you going to spend any time kind of sitting around doing nothing. And um, so, you know, people have asked, you know, what's the best martial art? Well, 
what the... Uh, I don't know who has the best boobs. Uh, <laughs> it's subjective. <laughs> well, it is subjective, but the thing is, what they've said about the, what is the best martial art, or what is the best exercise, then, it's the exercise that you'll do. So it doesn't matter if, you're, if you've are if found something that's the best in the world. If you don't do it, it doesn't mean anything. So if there's an exercise or a martial art training that you'll find that you'll do, and hopefully you'll do it here, um, it's the best one. It's the best one for you at that point in time. All righty. Well, that, that is very interesting, Father. Now, um, all right, second half of the show, what can we do? Hey, Dad, the movie Creed's out. And um, anyway, the, these people, these great, wonderful people, they sent us, uh, they sent us some free passes, and uh, my friends and I uh, just suck those out of your hands. Well, what I, was funny is that a lot of people didn't realize that this was going to be one of the better movies of this year. And it's, uh, a lot of people I know thought it was going to be one of those kind of like, you know, hey, Adrian, uh, I'm, uh, I'm you old. know, kind of like a, a, a caricature of itself. Uh, well, I have but, a uh, yeah, but it's actually um, it's actually gotten some really really good reviews, mostly from the people who've seen it. Yeah. Uh, no, but seriously, there's a a lot of times you get sort of sucked into the uh, the BS hype of movies like this, but everybody that I've spoken to liked it. Oh, yeah. you know what? It's actually a better boxing movie than any Rocky movie because Stallone's dialogue as a trainer everything he said made sense and he never once said in this movie let him hit you in the face like 50 times before he gets tired and then you fight and then you punch him once after 20 minutes he'll fall <laughs> over <laughs> you know like the boxing the boxing in this movie I gotta say it from a cinematic uh, landscape um, you have these one takes that kind of go 360 degrees in the ring and really get a feel of one fighter getting punched and how he turns the tables and then he starts punching the other guy and you really feel each hit, you know? And there is some plot and stuff like that, but Rocky plays the some greatest... Plot and stuff. <laughs> the, the, the Rocky plays the best. It's the best cameo, you know? He's a co-star of the movie, but at the same time, he's like that old friend that you're happy to see, but yet you're not counting the minutes until he gets back because um, this guy Michael B. Jordan is a great actor um, trained wonderfully for this movie I think I think this is one of the better movies of the year it definitely I, I recommend Creed and you, you'd think it'd just be like oh my god they're just gasping at straws but nope it's actually it's full of just enough ham and cheese to make you stuffed but you're not <laughs> but you don't leave holding your stomach okay wanting to throw up <laughs> <laughs> I guess so it's an incredible movie yes Yes, and if you would like a free Creed poster, just say so, because we got a couple. All right. All right. Anyway, that was a Creed movie review. All right. All right. All right, Creed. Yeah. What, uh, Dad, what, what kind of martial arts do people generally have to practice in the snow, like climates like that? Like, I wonder, like, you know, if there's a battlefield on a mountaintop in the snow, well, like, what kind of, what kind of, you see, how our, they fight? Our problem, with, our problem with things like that is we always kind of re reference it based on our situation here. So, of course, we have really heavy winters. You know, we happen to be in the middle of a lot of uh, heavy snowfall and things like that. Japan, where, mo as I said, most of this kind of information comes from, is that, uh, you know, it's half tropical. So, it's, it's, you know, it's kind of like equal to maybe like Virginia and things like that. So, mm. it's really, you know, it's got a long skinny body north to south. So in the very south, uh, Fukuoka, place like that, it's very warm, almost like almost painfully hot in the summer. And then, uh, you know, it, their southern most, southernmost island, uh, Okinawa, I mean, it's basically Hawaii. And so you've got a lot of places on there that, you know, it's only Hokkaido, which is the island at the north where it snows. And they actually have, they, I think the, they had their Winter Olympics there. Mm -hmm. So... When, when it comes to things like that, martial arts, you would do any of the martial arts out, but it wouldn't be the same. As you said, you know, it's like, it wasn't like, you know, the early December to uh, mid-March uh, uh, or end of March, you know, snowfall. It's, you know, they had a bit of snow and they, you know, they would have... You got some nice crouching tiger, hidden dragon yeah, stuff. Yeah, you right, know. but mostly it was, you know, you, they would do stuff, but you look at them dressed and they didn't have to really dress that. You know, they didn't have like the, the mucklucks and all the other stuff. That they, yeah, they didn't have to do flips in a snowsuit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, sometimes, of course, you'd have, you'd see the, the guy Shohutsuki doing the uh, white ninja thing because he was in the snow. But, you know, most of the time, most of the time that stuff doesn't happen. It's kind of funny because I, I met somebody the other day who had, was telling me that their, their daughter was practicing ninjutsu in Europe. 
and it's you know it's, it's really nice that people you know believe it. But you know, ninjutsu is is you know it's 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 not one of those arts that people would really ever practice. I mean, it, there are people who would do things, but you know, like ninjutsu wasn't really a martial art as we see it. It was a, a martial art in the sense that there had to be some fighting capabilities, but mostly what ninjas were were spies. And what spies needed to do is basically be able to go in and blend in with the local populace, not beat them up. And I mean, sure, they had to be able to do stuff like, you know, climb a building and then put a thread down near somebody's mouth and then dribble a poison. But that's not martial arts. That's just skills. So they would have things. But, you know, it's always funny because whenever you see people, you know, t teaching ninjutsu skills, they're never teaching ninjutsu skills. They're just teaching basically uh, what they call tai taijutsu, which is like, means body techniques which means it's like punching and kicking and really you know some really basic stuff but if you wanted to learn real martial arts i mean i mean the old style the koryu you have to go to a, a martial arts place and not a ninjutsu place and you know they, they but a lot of them existed on mountains because they you know they, the idea of having a, a city-based martial arts school is only a it's a western concept well it's a they have them in japan now too but really how can you learn anything if you, you know, if you take a subway to a class and a subway home again? Most of the stuff would be you go somewhere, train, and come back home and try to survive getting there. Mm -hmm. So it was, uh, you know, completely different. So. And I think people are in love with the idea of being a ninja, you know, include yeah. myself included. Okay, well. Yeah. A ninja Batman, right? Yeah, yeah. like, um, you know, everyone out there, if, if, if you are learning ninjutsu from... A, hair, a hairy thing in the sewers, I suggest uh, <laughs> you leave. <laughs> a hairy thing in the sewers, my God. <laughs> I can only imagine how that must be interpreted by people. <clears throat> <laughs> For 15 years, <laughs> we have stayed in the shadows. Raphael, 10 flips now. <laughs> yeah. I've been filling this episode up with some stupid voice. I don't know, Dad. I'm, I'm starting to get my, my confidence back <laughs> about, right. about doing voices. Or you could turn a coin and be like, you are here because the outside world rejects you. I am your father. This is your family. Together, we must get rid of these creatures, these turtles. <laughs> I think that's pretty good. Do that's you? pretty good. Yeah. That's pretty good. I thought you were a splinter for a second. I realized you weren't. <laughs> <laughs> Ouch. <laughs> well, I remember, well, I grew up after, I grew up way after that stuff or way before that stuff. I, you know, I, I was the father. You what were. was your ninja? All right, like, before we go, what was your childhood ninja turtle? Like, you know. Well, I didn't have one. Well, we, what do we have? Prince Charming. <laughs> <laughs> Prince Charming knew how to f people up, yo. Well, no, we, we had like we had like this um, GI Joe stuff I mean, before GI Joe became like a, a comic book character. We had you know what they would do in the old days. They would like make a a, a um, what's it called a helmet and a machine gun and like a gun a, a pistol like a, a forty five and you'd wear it running around you know shooting Japs. I mean because that was you know in the fifties and sixties. We were still within 10 years of the Second World War, so killing Japs was still a pretty big idea. That, uh, oh, you mean after World War II? Yeah, after World oh, okay, War II. Okay, okay, I thought you said before. I'm like, no, 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 after. I'm like, you. Well, no, here. Uh, you have been <laughs> horribly <laughs> misinformed. <laughs> well, no, I mean, it ended in 45, and so by 1960, it was only 15 years. Which is crazy when you really think about it. Like, you know. That's all happening. It's just like, hey, remember that war? <laughs> Jeez. It's been 15 years since, like, September 11th, you know? like Exactly. And it's been 15 years, and it doesn't seem that long. So that's kind of weird to have been, like, let's say someone in their 30s is like, God, remember that war? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Where we blew them up? Whoa, did we ever. Wow. Oh. <laughs> anyway. Yeah, it's kind of interesting how just through pop culture, it's like, what... What other country do these clueless little kids pretend they want to kill when they're running around with fake weapons? You know? <laughs> Let's unite. All the kids out there, all the parents out there, this is a public message. When your kids are running around saying that they want to kill this, kill that, look up to the skies and get ready for the aliens, man. <laughs> okay. <laughs> One ra human race against the Martians, you know? Show your children a war of the worlds and be like, you want to kill some Japs? What about this? <laughs> okay. <laughs> what about these Japs? Yeah. Yeah. No, but it's interesting, though. It's, it's uh, you know, just uh, on our final words in this broadcast, I just want to say, I love me some Japan. 
I miss the country. I haven't been in that country in five years. And if any little kids try to shoot people from that country, I'll slap them in the face, <laughs> even if it's with a fake little gun. All right. Well, actually, you know, since awesome we're, country. Since we're talking about Japan, I, I, one of my earlier martial arts memories was um, a comic book called the Judo Master. We we, we talked about this in uh, one of our podcasts. When we were talking about Daredevil and stuff. Right. It, yeah. But yeah, I mean, but you know, because we just it just realized you know when you look at it, you know, you realize how absurd some of these stories are. That you know, not not the. Uh, the ninjas or anything like that, but it's just funny how you know I mean, the guy was wearing a spandex costume, you know, with with the, the Japanese flag kind of all emblazoned on it, and you sort of wonder like, where do you find that thing? <laughs> <laughs> they, you know, you see these pictures of these guys in you know South Sea Islands, and their clothes are literally rotting off their bodies. But he had this spandex thing. <laughs> <laughs> Say okay. Oh brother. Anyway, Japan, I'm coming for you. I see you in my future. And I just want to let you know that I miss you. I want to hug you again. I want to right. eat your food. <laughs> and, and not just those rice balls from the 7-Eleven. Yeah, yeah. I want to go to the Japan and not feel like I'm homeless. You know, I could be homeless in Canada. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Without further ado, that is uh, the end of our awkward episode of 200 Sun. I am Ryan Stick Jelena. And I'm Tuan Philip Jelena. Uh, is it better when you ground? Yo, I'm trying to think of something to sign off with. A good, uh, a good, uh... A live broadcast from two people that are not dead. <laughs> I have always liked Kawabunga. <laughs> <laughs> That's really good. I made her funny! Ha, ha, ha. All right. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Bye. Cookies This will be no sound